Hey GED students, Matt emailed me this problem at lightandsaltlearning at gmail.com and it's actually one of my problems. It comes from the GED math crash course, algebra unit, the lesson on writing expressions. And I was super excited to bump this example up to the top of my video list for a few reasons. One, it is so GED typical. In fact, I would not be the least bit surprised if you saw one just like this. It involves a lot of skills. It involves the skill of understanding ratios, the skill of interpreting word problems, and the skill of writing algebraic expressions. Three GED skills all in one place. That's the kind of stuff they love to do. <laughs> and then the other reason I was excited for this is because I don't have any videos like that yet. It's very infrequent that you guys managed to uh, send me a question I haven't already dealt with a few times. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. The problem said this. Some students in Mr. Thompson's algebra class are comparing their schedules. Jenny remarks that she is taking three credit hours more than Pedro. And Juan says he is taking four credits less than Pedro. If Pedro is taking P credits, which expression represents the ratio of Juan's credit hours to Jenny's credit hours? Okay, like I always do when we first hit up a word problem, I've got to ask myself the question, what are they asking me to do or to find? So let's head straight to that question down at the bottom. It said, let's see, if Pedro is taking P credits, okay, that's more information. There we go. Which expression, found my question word, which expression, so they're asking me to write, a, write an expression, represents the ratio of Juan's credit hours to Jenny's credit hours. Okay, they're asking me to write an expression. Obviously, they're algebraic expressions. See the letters in here, those variables. And uh, that expression is supposed to represent something. What is it supposed to represent? It's supposed to represent the ratio. Well, guys, one nice word, way to translate ratio is just fraction. You can write a ratio as a fraction. So they're asking me to write a fraction. And now what fraction do they want me to write? They want me to write the ratio of Juan's credit hours to Jenny's credit hours. So remember guys, order matters with ratios, with fractions. And when you're told to write a ratio of blank to blank, you're gonna go, so if it's blank to blank, whoa. <laughs> I need an actual blank, not the word blank. You are going to go in that order as you write your fraction. You'll put the first thing they present in your numerator on the top of your fraction and the second thing in your denominator, the bottom of your fraction. So they're telling you if they want Juan's credit hours to Jenny's credit hours that they want an expression for Juan's credit hours on the top and Jenny's credit hours on the bottom. Now here's the problem. If you go and you look for that information, well, it gets a little weird. Let me show you what I mean. So Juan's credit hours. Go looking through this problem, find what we know about Juan. Uh, here we go. It says Juan says that he is taking four credits less than Pedro. Juan's taking four credits less than Pedro. So, I mean, the question would remain, well, then how many is Pedro taking? Like, I can't figure out one unless I know about Pedro. And that's exactly what makes this an algebraic expression. We have a mystery. Look at what the problem says about Pedro. Pedro is taking P credits. Some number they won't tell us. We don't know if P is 15 or 12 or eight. All we know is that he's taking some number of credits. And since we don't know how many, we're gonna substitute in that, num that letter P to stand for this unknown number, okay? now. Interesting, we see that Juan is taking four credits less than Pedro. So if you want to talk about Juan, you have to do it in relation to Pedro. You have to deal with that P. Now, the problem that most students have is that they go, oh, less than means subtract. I'll just take four and take away Pedro's credits. And there it is, four credits less than Pedro. And I would say that's not true. I'll say that again. I don't want to take the number four and take away Pedro's credits. Let me just, you know, in order to understand this, let's pick a random number. Let's say Pedro was taking, I don't know, 12 credits. Well, if I took, if I had the number four and I took away 12 credits, 
it would look like Juan then is taking negative eight credits. How in the world do you take negative eight credits? That doesn't even make sense. So your expression wouldn't make any sense if you had a lot of credits there. And so it's really important to understand that that word or that phrase less than actually switch, switches order. If you wanna take four credits less than Pedro, you have to take start with Pedro's amount, and they told us to use P for that, and then take four credits away from there. So whichever expression is correct for us is going to have four credits less than Pedro in the numerator. So let's see, oh look, there's only one four credits less than Pedro in the numerator. Let's just check for the sake of the problem that our denominator is good as well. So I'm gonna go back to that ratio they asked me to write. And they asked me to do Juan's credit hours to Jenny's credit hours now. Let's go figure out what the problem says about Jenny's credit hours. So Jenny remarks that she is taking three credit hours more than Pedro, three credit hours more than Pedro. So again, we don't know Pedro, we're calling Pedro P, but if Jenny's taking three more than that, then she's P and three more. And that absolutely makes sense. We can see there's Jenny doing three more than Pedro. And we can see there on the top in the numerator, there's one taking four less than Pedro. And see how I'm just reading this expression? I can read that P as Pedro. So Pedro's hours take away four gives me one. And Pedro's hours plus three more give me Jenny's. And so then this here is, oh, where's my eraser? So then this here is the ratio, the fraction, of Juan's credit hours to Jenny's credit hours. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math problem, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.